Go Local News editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for joining us for the 4 o'clock news and politics show. We've got some politics for you. Pat Fonts, I want to welcome you into the studio. Thank you very much, You've Kate. You've been on the media trail because you are running in the Democratic primary to face United States Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. Talk True. with us about your decision to throw your hat in the ring. <laughs> okay, the decision to throw the hat in the ring happened in this way. I've been living in Europe for a long, long time, up until 2004. And when I came back, I found a state that um, wasn't what I left when I left in 1973. Um, you know, the Democratic Party had moved somewhere toward the center, or even right of center, to the extent that I practically didn't recognize the party as my own. Uh, and when I came back, having lived in Europe, I was also very aware of the uh, difference between the European view of America and the American view <laughs> of America. Uh, people who asked me, how can you go back to that place, Pat? You know, mm. how can we know you and how can you go back to that place? So um, I got involved almost immediately in the anti-war movement because it was still just after the Iraq war had yes. started when I, when I came back. And uh, I joined a group called South County Justice and Peace Action Group, and then I got involved with a group called Rhode Island Mobilization Committee Against Wars and Occupation. Mm. And little by little, it got to the point where I finally ended up in about four peace groups. And the common and constant complaint in those peace groups is that we talk to each other. It's very hard <laughs> to find somebody else to talk to. Uh, we run events and we go to each other's events and we give speeches and we go to each and other's And there must speeches. have been a moment and where so someone on. said, maybe you should <laughs> run, Pat. Well, exactly. Well, the moment was this. I went to a Democratic Town Council town hall for Sheldon Whitehouse in Westley. I live in Huffington, Rhode Island. So I saw that he was going to be speaking at the Calabrese Club on Saturday morning. Got myself into my car and drove down. And found a little group of maybe 40, 50, 60 people mm. and sent the White House addressing them. And I got a chance to actually ask a question because it wasn't that hectic to get into the question game. And I asked him two questions about issues that were really, really troubling me. One was me and all the people in my groups. Uh, one of them was the question of why he had voted to approve this budget of $716 billion, which included a military increase of $70 billion that no one could figure out who had even asked for the Pentagon. <laughs> the Pentagon had not asked for it, okay. and yet somebody put this money in. And the other question was what was hot at the time, near the end of April, was the question of uh, a proposal that Ron Paul had made to, Rand Paul, Rand Paul had made to um, temporarily call, call a little bit of a halt on the authorization for the use of military force. The war powers and that he to, and Ber with Bernie Sanders. Exactly. <laughs> and that, uh, to stop and look at it. I mm. don't think the vote would have an, annulled the authorization. It was to stop and look at it, give some look, especially in the light of the Yemen problem. So I asked him question, had he questions. Made, had, he made the, had he made his vote at this point? Right. Well, okay. Because there were only 10 Democrats who voted, and our two Rhode Island senators are among the 10. That allowed so, the president to still have those war powers that were uh, allowed right after 9-11. Absolutely. Mm. So I went up. I've, I'm from the floor, I asked a question about each of those issues. He gave me an answer that didn't satisfy me. In the first case, the necessity of compromise. We had to compromise with the Republicans, or they would have hurt domestic spending. And the other question was time. It was, there was a time to study the issue well enough. And now we can see what's saying there wasn't time. That, there wasn't time in April, and now we're bombing the only city that you can bring food in to all these people who have no other food. They have to import 90% of their food. And they so you were it. not happy with so his answers. I was not <laughs> happy at all with his answers. And so I waited to, be, to speak to him at the end. I thought I'd appeal to him at a personal level, because way back in 2006, six or sometime like that. Must have been just after he was elected. I had gone to his office and supported him in a decision he made with regard to a, a case that at the time was notorious, the Acorn case, mm. remember Acorn? And so I had started out with a very positive feeling toward him. And I explained that to him and I said, what has happened to you? Why have you moved so far toward <laughs> warfare? Did you say that? Did you say I what has said, happened to you? Yeah, more or less, okay. more or less. I said, I, or at least I said something like, I can't understand Are you the, what has happened to your positions. Mm. And he was pleasant with me, we were walking out and then unfortunately Actually, the poor guy, I'm, now I, this is the fifth or sixth time I've told the story, <laughs> but he unfortunately said to me, well, if I guess I had said something like, I don't want to vote for you. After mm. all that favor, I don't want to vote for you. And he said something like, um, well, then who would you vote for? And I said to him, well, I mean, I won't vote for anyone. 
if I have to vote for you. And that put it in my mind, you see. I went home, and not to, about myself. I just thought, this is not right, this is not fair. We shouldn't have, <laughs> we should have options, we, we should have alternatives. And by coincidence, within three or four days after that, I got approached by two different groups of people and asked would I run. And given that my head was where it was, and given that these people are dear friends with whom we've spoken and spoken about, the, the, one of the primary motivations was to get attention to the anti-war position, mm. because we don't get in the newspapers, we don't get, pardon me, but I don't know whether you've ever had anyone on to speak about the anti-war uh, positions. So we felt, look, even if this sounds like a totally crazy thing, uh, even though you know, it may be an absurdity, that may be the very thing that gets the media's attention. Well, here and you that, are <laughs> talking about the issues. <laughs> exactly. And one of the issues you mentioned, too, is, is also environmental issues. And the senator has been very publicly non-committal on the power plant exactly. as one way to put it. Exactly. Um, I believe there was an instance yeah. of a hearing up in Barville where he instead was in Little Compton talking about his opposition to climate change. So a lot of folks have questioned right. if that's the case, if he is so opposed to climate change, right. why he won't right. take a definitive a, 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 a position on the proposed Invenergy power plant in Barville. And so that's another piece of they, your platform as exactly, well. That's another piece of the platform, the, the Barville plant and the LNG plant here in, mm. in Providence, you see. I mean, uh, his, what, what someone called him the, to me the other day, you know, not in their backyard. So you defend their backyard, you know, the rest of the world or the rest of the country, but you won't defend our own backyard. And it's you know, another moniker that he's getting attached to now is like Mr. Bridge for you, you know. You still, maybe two years ago, you conceivably could still have thought that natural gas was a bridge fuel. But it's now 2018, and we now know what the methane uh, you know, pollution is, what the methane cost of extracting the fracked gas is. And yet he still refers to natural gas as a bridge fuel. I, I call him <laughs> the bridge fuel. What bridge? The bridge from, the bridge from not yet. The yet bridge from not yet, not yet, to too late, too late. And that's the bridge we're going to be on. You, it's never time to make the changes. Yes, it's going to hurt. So did abolishing slavery. Abolishing slavery hurt somebody's economy, no doubt about it, but it had to be done. And I think the same thing has to be done with changing from fossil fuels. It's going to hurt, but no one wants to bear the pain. Then it will be too late. Too late, Mr. Bridgefield, too late. So let's talk a little bit. You talk about raising the issues and going around. Mm -hmm. are, are you in it to win it? Do you think that you can get well, the progressive support behind I'm, you? I'm, I'll tell you, I'm, I won't say no. I'm not going to start out saying, you know, uh, this is only being done to, you know, it's only being done to attract attention. You, you never know. Look you never know. Look what happened to the moon this morning. Look in New York. This <laughs> is a big progressive the big, victory in New York. The big <laughs> inspiration for me, if that young woman could throw out a guy who's spoken of as the next speaker of the House of Representatives, <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? It, Pat, Pat it, Fonz it could, could happen, do it. You know, it could happen. And you've got a campaign yeah. apparatus around you. You expect to be out there on the streets. So should we be expecting more positions and statements from you moving oh, forward? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We've, uh, the, my declaration of candidacy list, listed some of the affairs in which I've been most active. But there are other affairs about which I need to edu educate myself more because if I'm going to be consistent with my position that the true knowledge comes from really dealing with the facts on the ground, really, you know, co conversing with the people impacted by the problems, then I have to go and talk to other groups that I haven't been active in, but where people can educate me. You're going to be out there on the campaign trail and having Absolutely. just kicked off, Pat, I appreciate you yeah. taking the time yeah. to come in, yeah. introduce yourself to voters. I'm sure we'll hear from you moving forward, but again, challenging a candidate and uh, elected official you'd once supported, but have now change your mind. So Pat Fonz, I appreciate okay. your taking the time to come in. Democratic candidate for U.S. Senate. Thank you so much. We'll talk with you soon. And thank you okay, very much Okay, thank you so much. Me. We'll let you go Good around afternoon. the corner and we'll be right back with our next guest here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center.